All right, here we are with our patron-only mini campaign. This one's called the Archmage's Lost Hideaway, based on uh, it's a 5e Goodman's game short module, which I sort of bastardized quite a bit, but <laughs> it's the basis basis of the game, and I think we're uh, we're in for a good time. It's a it's a nice little short one, but we'll uh, we'll see what we can do here. Hey, even the even the lowliest of bastards can inherit the throne. That's right. <laughs> Don't ask Jon Snow. <laughs> he doesn't want it, so. <laughs> That's the best This games. is really uh, touching on my backstory, and I don't like it, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we're going to jump right into it. So Bill, your character is named Saul, right? That's right. Saul Euphrates. Give me a quick idea of what Saul looks like. So Saul... Um... Oh, there's an actor that looks a lot like him. I can't think of his name at the time, but <laughs> he, Saul is a, a fairly slight young man. He's got um, relatively uh, light colored skin, uh, a little bit of sort of like light, light tan, I guess. Um, he's got kind of hair that sort of parts in the middle-ish or like off to one side, a little bit hangs down several inches, kind of wavy brown hair. He has uh, bluish greenish eyes that are um, a little bit piercing if you look deeply into them. Oh, this is longer than your backstory. <laughs> it is, yes. Yeah, yeah. He he he's not uh, he's not someone who would be probably wanting to get into fisticuffs with a big, huge dude or lady because um, he's pretty small. But he is wiry. Oh, like that actor. Um, what's his name? Um, Tim- Timothy. Timothy. That might be the one, actually. Yeah, a lot looks a lot like him. Saul, you are traveling down the Westward Road from Dan- the Danchil Road, is what it's called, from uh, the city of Zampir. As you are walking down the road, suddenly you're knocked onto the ground prone. Roll initiative. Wow, it's incredible having a plus plus something to initiative for once. Uh, Twelve, or Saul Euphrates. So this individual that runs out from the brush the, in the forest that you're walking through uh, the, on the small road, knocks you down, grabs a pouch off of your belt, and runs into dashing into the other side of the forest. So I, I immediately grab for my belt, feel around, no, 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 say it isn't so, not not my spice. It is your, your spell components. But not my bag of spice, though. No, your spices are there oh, fine. Thank goodness. But your components are, are headed over the hill into the forest. What does... Did I get much of a glimpse of this character? What do they look like? This looked like he was wearing, like, black leather armor and was very quick. It, almost like, you know, he was ambushing you, ran in, and then dived over into the into the brush and the bushes of the forest. The forest is very thick. But not a glimpse of his face or anything. Just you saw his back, a hooded cloak and leather armor. It's your turn. My fly speed's no faster than my run speed, is it? So that's not going to help me much right now. No, and, and in this forest, it would be difficult for you to be able to fly around without hitting into branches and, and trees. I'm going to use uh, half my action to get up and start sprinting after this this thief stole my spell components. So you can make it about 45 feet, and you can see him. Uh, running through the trees, but he's also still dashing and uh, continues to dash on through the forest. Getting to be a little more difficult, so give me a perception check to see if you can follow where he's going. Uh, 19. Okay, yeah, you can see him sort of, he heads off a little bit more to the west side um, from the road and you can see him dashing and sort of jumping in behind some brush. You sort of lose sight of him, but you know the direction he's going. I'm going to pursue and I'm going to yell at him. Hey, you little, you little thief. Don't you know who I am? Give me that back. He doesn't stop, but he does sort of trip up and and fall down, giving you an opportunity to sort of make a little bit of a catch up to him. But you're not going to get on him this time, but you're going to make a lot of headway. So you continue to dash. I'm just going to keep sprinting. Yep. So as you get closer, you see there's another uh, cloaked figure that he's standing next to, and he hands the bag over to that cloaked figure and that one runs and he turns around and pulls out his dagger standing looking 
squaring off with you. So this is the original one. He's got his dagger out, blocking my way, and he's handed it off to someone else. That's correct. And am I still in relatively thick kind of like brush and trees and whatnot, or are we out in the oak clear now? You're getting into rough terrain. It's going to start slowing your movement down. You're going to go half speed. But you can get up on him if you if you want to on your turn. I'm so glad. You know, I picked this ring and I was like, you know what, it's going to be completely useless. I have a ring of free action. That is my magical item. Difficult terrain does not cost me extra movement. Oh, look at that. Coming in handy right at the beginning. But anyway, um, I've still got to get around this dude with his dagger. Okay, and I can't use any of my spells. Son of a gun. Anything that takes a component. I do, I do have uh, one spell that, that I think might be useful here that does not require any uh, material components. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dash slightly off to the left of this this thief who has turned to face me. And I'm going to make like a 45 degree angle just about like 10 feet to their left. And as I'm approaching them, I'm going to cast Thunder Wave. So it is um, a wave of thunderous force is going to sweep out for me. And then a uh, 15 foot cube originating from me. Um, anyone in there must make a con saving throw. And on a failed save, they take thunder damage and are pushed 10 feet away. Uh, that's an eight. Okay, so that's a fail. Okay, so this thunder wave shoots through the forest. The brush all moves out of the way. The branches on the trees move and this, this uh, cloaked figure gets knocked back into the brush about 10 feet. And uh, as the, the wave form dissipates and you see this is looks like a like a 10 year old child oh don't kill me <laughs> friggin Saul beating up on kids <laughs> he sort of stands back up again and he looks at you and then starts to run off in the opposite direction that his buddy went finish him <laughs> finish him <laughs> so Saul goes oh stinking kid what who put him up to this so i'm gonna keep sprinting after um the one who now has my components okay give me a perception check uh 17 you stand there for a few minutes and or for for maybe at 30 seconds and you're just listening and you just hear the the birds and and the trees and then uh, a slight sound off to the west Pretty far off in the distance, it sounds like the cracking of maybe a branch or, or something. So you hear some some footsteps quite a ways away. I'm going to sprint in that direction. I need I need my stuff to be able to use a lot of my magic. So now we're going to shift here. Deep in the Kesper Forest, along the West Merchant Roadway, lies a crossroads. 80 miles to the south lies the city of Dalkin, also known as the Ridge's End. Sixty miles to the east lies the town of Zampir, also known as the city of the Shadow Wolf. And fifteen miles to the north, along the Odian River, lies a village called Northswald. The river is fed from the snow-covered mountains far to the north and feeds into Lake Penetral, a large freshwater lake that rivals the size of a small sea. The townsfolk of Northswold ship their goods down the Odian River along the coastline for trade. Zephyr has stopped for a rest along at the crossroads. She is traveling north, resting in Dockland at the temple of Odamara. Uh, she was there through the winter. In Dockland, she heard a tale of a traveling merchants from the north that have wagons bearing the markings of her former traveling family in a scene that was seen in the city of Northwald outside the Second Troll Inn. Zephyr, tell us a little bit about your character and what you look like. I am an Air Genasi trickster cleric. I have light blue silverish eyes, light blue skin that has like a crystal pattern all over it, and light blue, very long hair. I am on the small side. I also am wearing a Harlequin mask pin that is a symbol of Oladamara. You were in a traveling family. Yes. And your family had been uh, wiped out. 
Yes. For the stories that you heard. And you are now on your way to Northwald because you've heard about these these uh, wagons that could be from your former family. Buzz has been wandering the countryside for many seasons searching for the location of the Hive Queen. Through deep meditation and spiritual guidance of the swarm, they feel they're drawing closer to their final destination. Buzz does not usually travel along roadways, but prefers to meander through the rough, undisturbed forest, believing that the entrance to the Queen's Lair is always just around the corner, right over the next hill or that outcropping. Their hope and determination never wanes as the days and months and years pass by. As they emerge from the wood at the crossroads, they see Zephyr sitting on a fallen tree, looking at a sign leading to Northwald. After a brief conversation about their weather and idle chat, Zephyr says she has to move along. She's in a rush to get to Northwall. Buzz bids her farewell and stands idle in the middle of the crossroads. They close their eyes. They inhale the fresh spring air, holding it in deep into their lungs, hoping that when they release, it will give them some sense of direction to take. Their mind starts to whirl, knocking them off balance, almost as if they were falling with their feet planted firmly on the ground. After a moment, Something takes hold of their inner key, regaining balance and almost spiritually moving them towards the roadway to Northwald. There's something about Zephyr that enlightens their senses, a mystical feeling that she will lead them to the Queen. So, Buzz, tell us a little about yourself. Wait for me, Zephyr! I am a green dragonborn. (laughs) I'm a Swarm Keeper Ranger, level 3, and a level 3 Astral Self Monk. Uh, hence the spirituality. I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just wearing, like, kind of simple, like, monk robes. Uh, think kind of like, you know, your stereotypical kind of Shaolin robe kind of thing, right? Like, wrappings around the forearms, uh, kind of big poofy sleeves up to the, to the elbow right before the wrappings kind of cinch it tight to myself. And normally when I'm walking around... I look, I have a beard. I have a very large beard made of bees, my swarm. It's usually the beard, but oftentimes they kind of like to meander and they'll kind of filter around. Maybe they'll give me a kind of a crazy hairdo. Other times they'll kind of come down and and give me like shoulder pads made of bees, perhaps a bee cape, uh, should they feel the whim. But uh, other than that, I'm fairly plain looking. (laughs) Other than that. (laughs) (laughs) So you get a chance to catch up to Zephyr if you guys want to discuss anything before we go on. You can take me to the queen. What queen? I feel it. Does that mean you want to join me? Yes. Okay. I do enjoy a good traveling companion. You have any stories? Mm, Perhaps... The swarm can speak to you. Do they sing? I would love to hear bees sing. And they will kick up a chorus of buzzing. It's incredibly monotone, and there's <laughs> <laughs> really no cadence other than a constant drone to it. And you see Buzz, they're kind of just like swaying to this music, quote unquote music. As, as you're walking down the road. That might be something we can work on. Mm, it's beautiful. Have you heard real music? What do you mean, real? From musical instruments. Mm, the swarm is an instrument. They are many things. But, but other ones, like, you know, a lute, or a guitar, or a flute, or anything? Will they aid us in finding Queen? Couldn't hurt. Right then, out of the woods, comes this guy in, in black leather armor and a cloak. It looks like a, about a, an older teenager. Sort of falls, stumbles onto the road, carrying a bag, looking back over his shoulder. He opens the bag up and starts grabbing stuff out, throwing, you know, feathers and and looks like maybe little p- 
pieces of, of spices and, and things onto the ground, and he dumps it onto the roadway, and he looks really disappointed. He turns around and looks back at you two. Are you okay? And starts to run. Hey, you left your stuff. And and he he just heads off over to the west of the other side and jumps into the trees. I will go over to the bag and start shoving everything back in, but looking at it as I do to see what's there. Okay, so as you're starting to look through this, suddenly this Asimar runs up through onto the road and runs into both of you. Hey, watch out! Uh, <laughs> That's Buzz's buzz of warning. <laughs> <laughs> did did you see um, someone about uh, yay tall, uh, kind of like in a dark clothing, running and carrying a little a bag of stuff? Yeah, he went that way, but he left his bag. He left the bag? Yeah, he stopped and he threw everything out of it and then he left. So you see everything on the ground. You You can pretty much see most of your stuff still there. You can pick it all back up. Yeah. Oh, that that thief. He, these are all my 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 things. I, I use these for to help me with my magic. Prove it to me that they are yours. Well, you see, this this here, I use this. Um, can I cast Detect Thoughts on him while he's thinking about how to explain that it's his? Sure. Tell me how it works. I can read the thoughts of certain creatures when I cast a spell as an action I can focus my mind on any one creature I can see within 30 feet. If it has an intelligence of three or lower, it doesn't, or doesn't speak effect, uh, any languages, it's unaffected. Do you have an intelligence of three or lower? It's a little higher than that. I initially learn the surface thoughts of the creature, what is most on its mind in that moment. Does he have to make a save? Uh, only if I probe deeper. So what are you thinking? I am very flustered and angry. And frustrated, but also um, relieved at finding um, these things that were stolen from me, basically. And I'm also fumbling over trying to trying to give examples of of what items are used for what spells. So I I would I would point down, see this this tiny little ball of you know, well it's kind of gross, but it's bat poop. It's it's guano and the sulfur. Well, when I cast fireball. I need that in order to cast Fireball, and it, let me tell you, it's a magnificent spell. I do know how spells work. Well, these these are all of my my ingredients to be able to cast all of the magic that I use. I wasn't questioning whether or not they were spell ingredients. I was questioning whether or not they are yours. Oh, uh, I, I see. Well, but I could tell they are yours here, and I'll help him pick them up, put them in the bag, and hand them to him. Thank you, thank you. That's very kind of you. What's your name? I, I am Saul. Saul Euphrates. That name sounds familiar. Well, uh, in, in certain regions, uh, you may have heard of my family, but I'm afraid there's... Uh, there's there are not much left of my family. Not much left of my family, either. My name is Zephyr. This here is Buzz. We just met. Zephyr, Buzz, it's, it's, it's nice to meet you both. I, I'm sorry for, for how I've just burst in upon both of you here, but I, I had been robbed by whoever that was that's just taken off. You do seem a bit flustered. Do you need a moment? Oh, I, I think I'll be fine. I, I'm just glad to have all of these ingredients back. Where are you headed? I'm sort of, kind of, sort of knocked me off kilter this whole encounter I I can't seem to remember where I was headed <laughs> <laughs> so b- long ago Buzz has lost interest in any of this conversation he's just he's just kind of off to the <laughs> side of the road like if there's any flowers around the, the swarm will kind of he's be pollinating exactly okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay we're headed to North as well you care to join us you know I, I think that's where I was going you know any good stories? It would be nice to have company. Well, stories. You know, I, I find stories are best shared after you've had some spice. Are you an enjoyer of spice? I can't say I've ever tried it. Oh, 
Oh my. Well. Why are you always into drugs, whatever character you play? <laughs> it's paprika. <laughs> yeah, you're just a pusher no matter what well, character you're you are. Some, you're into like euphoria, for sure. Booch too. With his four babies. Yeah. I've reached down to uh, another another pouch on my belt that I was actually quite glad wasn't taken. And dump a little bit of this kind of reddish orangish powder into my hand and, and hold it out to to Zephyr. And do I eat this or s- snort it? What do I do? You can snort it, but it's quite an experience, let me tell you. You, you might not like it. I, I find just a, a dab on the tip of the tongue will do you. And I will lick my finger and stick it in the spice and then put it in my mouth. Isn't it nice? It's quite interesting. How many people's fingers do you think have been in that bag? <laughs> <laughs> it's important that you you first pour the spice into your palm in order to keep the main pouch of spice, you know, <laughs> contaminant free. <laughs> you did wash your hands recently, yes? Uh, I well, yes, but I have been bounding through the shrubbery here so oh, a little dirt never hurt any yes it, I, I i i think it really actually brings out the bouquet of the paprika to add a little bit of this a little bit of that anyway let let let's let's start walking yes let's buzz are you coming yes he's looking for his queen you know his queen yes my goodness so uh is he related to the queen? Buzz, do you also have nobility in your bloodline? Mm, I am simply part of the swarm. The swarm? Do not ask him to play any music. Oh. Zephyr's a little picky. <laughs> <laughs> you two sure are interesting, um, interesting folks. I'm glad to have met you both, and and thank you again. Uh, it it means a lot to be reunited with these these components that I need for my spellcasting. And I hope to be glad we met you too. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, of course. Lilith stands on the starboard side of the merchant ship named the Torrent, as it sails northward along the coastline. She spots the inlet to the Odian River and hails to the ship's captain, letting him know she will disembark here. The torrent slows but does not stop as Lilith lowers the rowboat into the lake and paddles towards the shore. After making landfall, she sets up camp along the shore as the sun begins to set in this early spring day. The sound of birds in the trees and the sweet smell of newly blooming flowers gives her a peace that she's not been accustomed to enjoying. Over the past month, she's been on the run. The Shadow Guild does not allow its members to opt out of assigned missions. Those who choose unwisely will forfeit their membership. Ex-members of the Shadow Guild need to sleep with one eye open, as their days are now numbered. As Lilith watches the sunset over the lake, she closes her eyes and drifts off to sleep. She's dreaming of a place she knew long ago. Her mentor from the Shadow, or mentor from the Shadow Clan sparring with her, suddenly getting a solid hit up on her leg. The pain seems real, too real. She opens her eyes to see a massive turtle clamping down on her with its beaked mouth on her leg. Roll initiative. Booch, no! <laughs> no, Booch. <laughs> this is Lilith. She's her friend. <laughs> Send one too many spore babies. You're having I a bad trip, Booch. <laughs> Trust me, I don't taste too good. <laughs> That's a big turtle. Yeah, I was just thinking that. You wake up, and this turtle's mouth is clamped around your leg and pulling you into the lake. It's going to try to snap down again to to, uh, try to snap into your leg a little bit more. It's a 15 to hit. It's a miss. And it's your turn. Well, that's not nice. Can't we work this out? (laughs) <laughs> it does not respond. It does not. You are a meal. I, yeah, and I want to scare it away, if anything. So Lilith is going to cast her Firebolt Cantrip at it. Um, and that's a 26 to hit. Oh, yeah. 
Ooh, I rolled a 10 on one of the dice. Um, 19 points of damage. <laughs> so that you did firebolt. So you this this bolt of flames comes out and sort of engulfs its face as it's you know s- swinging its head around trying to pull you into the lake. It sort of backs up a little bit and then snaps back at you another time. Uh, 17 to hit. Um, yeah, I'm gonna cast. You know what? I'm gonna cast shield. So when you take a hit by by an attack. Uh, you can make your AC plus five. So I'm going to use shield. So he, he pulls back and he tries to clamp down and and your shield just hits its head just momentarily to keep it from biting back down on you. It's your turn again. While you're thinking about it, the rest of you walking up the road, you hear off in the distance about a little over 120 feet or so away down the, down the road, you see this rowboat and this large mound-like thing moving uh, near the lake edge. And you see somebody down at the bottom sort of, this this shot of flame shoots up into the air. So you guys will be able to get, if you dash, you should be able to get there in about three rounds of this combat. That doesn't look good. Should we help? Yes, let's let's go see what's going on. We run. Saul's going to start sprinting. Zephyr will be hot on his heels. Buzz will be walking normal. <laughs> um, Lilith was pretty happy with how her firebolt did, so she'll try another firebolt, and she'll be like, that really gets my goose! She rolls a 21 to hit. Yeah, good hit. And then 13 more fire damage. My base walking speed is actually 40 rather than 30 at that Again, I'm not dashing, but <laughs> I am walking. I do walk a little bit faster than a normal person. You'll, you'll get there one round later. Okay, so the turtle drags you a little bit more onto the ground as you sort of fall back. Because you were you were laying there sleeping as it got you. You haven't really been able to get out of this, this grapple. So you can, if you want to, try to, um, to roll a, a post-strength check and be able to pull out of this on your turn. Uh, but on your next turn. So right now, he is going to bite down on you one more time. That's an 18 to hit. Uh, that hits. Okay, that's 19 slashing damage. And he backs up. That hurts so bad. Into the lake and pulling you along with him. Now your your back's getting into the, the sort of the mushy ground right before it goes into this lake uh, with the... The, the water sort of splashing up on you. You're not under the water or anything, but you're you're being drugged. No, but that hurts so bad that Lilith's like, I'm gonna cream your corn, and she casts Hellish Rebuke at second level. Don't worry, I have a revivify. You're good. Okay. <laughs> so I point, a, I point a finger. The creature that dam- damaged me is now surrounded by Hellish Flames. They need to make a deck save. That's a nine. Uh, so that's a fail, so they take the full 20 fire damage. That's a reaction, correct? Yes. So now you have your action. I'm going to try to break free. Yeah, it's a strength save. Uh, we're just going to do a pose strength check is what I'm going to do on this one. Athletics, eh, 11. So you fail. It still grabs, on, grabs onto you, and, and it's now it's attacked. So... You guys, the rest of you can see very clearly now what's happening. You see this um, tiefling that is being... Are we within 60 feet? Help! Help! Yeah, you have one more round to be able to get to him, so you're about 60 feet away. I can cast a spell. So go ahead and give me uh, initiatives for you. Buzz got 14. 10. Uh, 15. All right, so the next round after uh, we go through with Lilith... And the turtle, I think it's the turtle's turn right now. Then you guys will be able to get into the action. So the turtle's going to attack one more time. 25 to hit. That's 18 slashing damage. And now we're going to go to... Let's start back at the top. Lilith, you get to go next. Lilith is bloodied. She does not look good at all. And uh, she's pissed. So I'm going to I'm going to try to break free. And if I don't break free, I'm going to use my meta magic to cast a spell. It's 7. I'm going to then cast burning hands. Uh yeah, you don't break free. So 
Burning hands, okay. So burning hands, I hold my hands with my thumbs touching, and I'm just like gra- grasping at this turtle, and uh, flames are shooting forth from my from my fingertips in this 15 foot cone, um, and they they need to make a dex save. So you got a dex save of 15. Oh, my DC is 15. F's. Okay, I'm gonna take half damage, so 14 damage. And I'm looking, I'm looking really bad. <laughs> So this turtle's also, so you did this with the flames that shot out around, right? So this this turtle's now got smoke sort of rolling out from underneath its shell as it's uh, taken all this heat damage. And parts of its shell are starting to sort of flake off because of all the fire. I mean, I've hit it, yeah. Mm, like <laughs> Rose turtle, what a treat. So uh, Saul, you're up next. So Saul sees what's happening here. Um, and here's Lilith crying out for help and he feels like he needs to be prepared at his best performance for this fight. His magic is functions best when he's able to still his mind and concentrate. So he reaches down into his bag and he's going to pull out a beer, take the cork out of it and start drinking. He'll take a he'll take a drink and then pause and breathe out through his mouth and say, I will drink beer. Beer is the mind stiller. Then he'll resume drinking his beer. <laughs> and he's going to um, flavor the beer again with a little bit of paprika to bring out the hops, the barley. This is the slowest six seconds I've ever been through. <laughs> That's um. I don't know if you'll uh, if you would consider that my action or if um. No, I'll I'll let you take an action. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> we're we're just gonna say it feels like it takes a long time, but you really. Yeah, because he's it's high part as of hell. his magic. Chug that beer. Right. I see that this this turtle seems to have been um, affected. The, the fire seems to have good effect on it, so I'm going to hurl a firebolt toward it. So that is a 16 to hit. Uh, 16 misses. Dang. Okay. All right. We go to Buzz. Okay. So uh, I have Primal Awareness, which is an optional ranger feature that replaces Primeval Awareness. Why they named them so similarly, I don't know why. But it means I can cast Speak with Animals once per day without expending a spell slot. So I will do so. And I will yell out to the turtle gives me the ability to comprehend and verbally communicate with beasts for the duration it lasts for 10 minutes uh the knowledge and awareness of many beasts is limited by their intelligence but at a minimum beasts can give you info about nearby locations and monsters uh, including whatever they can perceive or have perceived within the past day might be able to persuade the beast to give you a small favor depending on the gm but i don't think that's going to happen here basically what i'm going (laughs) to yell at it is they're coming to kill you. Run! And I don't know what that sounds like. If it just is me norm- talking normally, or if it's like sounds warbly to everybody. I don't really. I don't know. So this this turtle that's that's already sort of smoking from the fire. This gets this message in its head. It's it's not a smart beast, <laughs> but it's already you know knows that that this thing is is uh, is. Not this meal is not that important to it, so it releases off of Lilith's leg and uh, starts to back into the water a little bit more. But Zephyr, you get a turn before it can do that. I am going to cast Healing Word on Lilith. Bless your heart. Fourteen points of health. Oh golly, I'm feeling better. Thank you, honey. That's a hell of a word. That's more like a shout. <laughs> Did that help? Are you feel? Are you okay? Oh yeah, honey, sugar. I feel good. Good. I I don't like to see anyone hurt. Ah oh, man, my leg. Whew. Okay, so this turtle, as it backs into the water a little bit, it takes one more sort of snap at you. That's a seven to hit. So it, it snaps at your <laughs> leg, and then sort of backs into the water slowly, still keeping its eyes focused on you. As if there's an opportunity, he might take it. Ah, uh, you sir, you stay back there. You just go. You skedaddle. You get out of here. It's now your turn. 
He's still look. He's still looking at me. He's backing into the water. The water's starting to go over top of its head. You know, its its little neck is sticking out, but its eyes are focused on you. I'm gonna ready another firebolt for if it were to come closer. Okay, Saul. Saul sees that this turtle seems to be retreating, and he's just going to hold as well. Um, I'm gonna continue approaching this this new person we've just met, so that I will be close by to be able to attack should this turtle come back up. I'll move right up, um, actually between Lilith and the turtle. So I'm uh, I'm in between Lilith and the water and the shore there, sort of ready and waiting in case the turtle comes back for another attack or anything else comes out of the water. I will go to the other side of the fire. What did you do to that thing to make it so angry? I I was just sleeping and I was minding my own business and I I don't know what happened. Um no no offense, but you do not look like you would taste good to me. I told him that. I said I wasn't a snack. Oh man, I'm Lilith. Uh thank you guys so much. I f- I feel much better after your healing, darling. Thank you. Uh, Zephyr. Zef Zephyr. Yes, Zephyr. Z Ze- Zephyr. Nice to meet you, Zephyr. Hi, Lilith. That's Saul. He likes spice. Oh, Saul. Okay. And that's Buzz. He's looking for his queen. Oh, I know many Buzzes back home. That's awesome. I love that name. Buzz. All Buzzes are good Buzzes. That's yet to be seen, but he's been okay so far. <laughs> oh, wow. Thanks, Zephyr. Are y'all traveling <laughs> together, or what's what's the situation here? Well, well uh... uh... I'm sorry, you go ahead, Sal. <laughs> they keep interrupting each other. <laughs> well, uh, actually, uh, I just... We met just on the road just a while back. Yes. <laughs> oh, there you go, yeah. Um, I thought I'd talk slow. We're, we're headed to Northwald. I um, heard rumor that uh, some people I know may be there, and Buzz decided to join me because for some reason he thinks I can find his queen, which... I guess I'll try and help him do. And then, you know, uh, Lilith, uh, I, I really don't think that Zephyr speaks slowly at all. It, it's not a kind thing to say. How far away is this North Swald place? It's about 20 miles. A, a bit down the road. Uh, not quite far enough for me, but maybe I can just make it a pit stop. I can go with Can I go with you? Oh, sure, yeah. The more the merrier. All right. I'll just uh, quick describe what it looked like because we didn't really get to... So Lilith is is a uh, is a tiefling female with solid black eyes, some fangs, a split snake like tongue, red and flowing kind of hair, um, some golden scales, but mostly red skin, and um, she's wearing this black cloak that kind of drapes over her and looks like uh, bat wings, sort of. She looks really scary and gruesome. She's kind of medium sized, like five foot six. But then she just sounds so sweet. She's a walking contradiction. I'm having a really hard time not going southern accent. Into, yeah. Just talking back with me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> I would take it as like a sign of like, you're my people. <laughs> do you, do you, on your character sheet, do you have southern as a language? Uh. <laughs> It's part of Infernal, I think. So <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was going to be in trouble for what I said, but I think you really. I mean, think draconic. Uh... <laughs> no, no, no. Draconic sounds like bees, because th- that's what Buzz speaks. <laughs> <laughs> we can speak draconic to each other, and I'll and I'll buzz back or something. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I I mean I'm. I need a rest. I need to rest, though, honey. Like, look at my leg. I'm all busted up. Yeah, that looks owie. Man, his teeth were like a hot knife and butter on my leg. Oh, I tried telling him I didn't taste good. How how, uh, how injured is is uh, Lilla still looking? Currently, I'm like half injured. <laughs> I was down to seven points. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty bad. Well, why don't we uh, we'll rest here tonight since it's getting late, and in the morning, if you're still hurting, I can I can uh, help you a little more. Ah, uh, sure thing, sugar. You know, Lilith, uh, I may be able to help mend some of your wounds. Oh, I mean, if you don't mind, I, I think a good night's rest will help too. But I'll take any help I could get. Uh, I think it 
it pays to be prepared. You, you don't know what we might come across in the night. Here, just just try to stay still for a moment. Uh, Saul will use his healing hands ability, which comes from his Asimar heritage. I'm going to closely watch everything he does with intense curiosity. So he he lays hands on on Lilith and she is restored health up to my level, so 6 HP. For some reason I knew how much HP already I was going to get. <laughs> you see uh, uh, Saul's eyes shimmer a little bit when he does this. They become a little bit brighter bluish green just for a moment. That was really neat. How did you do that? It's it's something that I've just I've been able to do for as long as I can remember. I I believe it just comes with my the way that I am. I don't know. Um, y'all, if you don't mind, I don't want to take first watch. Can I take last watch? I need to go to bed. Oh yeah, sure. You go right ahead and sleep. I got this. That turtle was looking at us all beady eyes, so just please be careful. Yeah, yes, I think that's a good idea. You rest. We'll 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 look after things. Okay, so you guys are gonna take turns, take watch. I mean, I feel pretty comfortable. Two people have healed me, so I'm like trusting them. I don't. Know. <laughs> So who's taking first watch? I will. All right. Everybody else, I assume, is going to go to sleep. We have no tiny huts available to us. I... We do not. Anything anyone, anybody wants to do to prepare for the night? Anything unique? Or are we just uh, going to pick out our bed rolls and go right next to the fire and get some sleep? Option B, please. My bed roll be out, bro. What's, what's the weather like? It's a very nice, cool evening for a spring evening. Uh, you know, as a light breeze coming off of the lake, um, it's very comfortable. It's 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 and uh, you know you get that the smell of wildflowers that are blooming, and uh, you know you hear up in the trees the, the the branches sort of moving, and occasionally a squirrel or a rabbit or something runs around. Um, but you know it's a, it's a beautiful night. Do do I see any? Is are there any wildflowers like like a patch of flowers um, in our vicinity that I can see? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's there's lots of flowers all around. Seeing that um, Buzz seems to be covered in bees, <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I'm feeling like a, a thing that might give us better rest is to be able to have the the scent of these flowers wafting over us while we rest. So I'm going to use another um, feature that Saul has access to to be able to control the weather in my vicinity so I can I can control any breeze that there is and direct where it goes so I'm gonna I'm gonna sort of channel the wind to come across the flowers and directly over where we are camping to give us a nice pleasant flowery smell as we rest mm. beautiful yeah it works works great <laughs> Buzz, you you uh, sort of pipe up for a second, and you go, "Oh, that that's that's that smells wonderful." Or, mm, that smells wonderful, you know. <laughs> <laughs> this, I mean, the swarm will will follow the follow the scent. Uh, and you see, they start to kind of kick up a little bit, and Buzz is kind of settling down on the other side of the fire, like opposite the breeze. And you know, as the breeze you generate, Saul kind of Buzz gets caught in the smoke. Like the smoke starts to like calm him down like make him him and the swarm kind of docile like you would with a beehive right you smoke it out to, right. to his, <laughs> as he lays down to sleep and he kind of calms down and that buzzing that is kind of is usually always constant again it, it, it quiets not entirely gone but but quite enough where you can sleep through it it's like a white so noise buzzes, machine. buzzing is gone and then lilith is starting <laughs> <laughs> just one buzz for the other zephyr gives me a perception check Six. Okay, so uh, as you're sitting there, everybody else sort of falls asleep. You're sort of watching the moon up in the sky coming across the trees. I find a stick and I start miming like I'm playing a flute. Okay. Everybody else is sleeping, so uh, it goes unnoticed by anyone, but you are very happy that you're doing it. It's like an air guitar, but, you know, air flute. And a few hours go by, nothing really eventful happens. You just hear the you know, the water from the lake uh, sort of brushing against the shore, giving that, you know, constant motion. Everything's calm and relaxed. <laughs> who are you going to wake up? 
I'll wake uh, up, Saul. So, Saul, please take your turn to watch. Yes, 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 of course. Uh, thank you so much. Anything happen? Anything of note? Did that turtle come back? The moon looked beautiful. I could still smell the flowers. It was lovely. Put some uh, sticks on the fire. Here, here's a stick. Oh, thank you. And I'll lay down and go to sleep. All right, give me a perception check. Saul is rolling good today. Uh, adjusted 20. About an hour, hour and a half goes by, and, and it's just such a beautiful night. It's it's hard to keep your eyes open, but you do. And then a, a, after a, a little while, you you hear the rowboat rocking. Now, it was, you know, the, the waves are sort of hitting the back of it, and you would hear that, you know, that thump against the wood in the back of the of the boat. And then suddenly now it seems like it's moving. I mean, it's sort of, sort of this... I'm coming knocking if the boats are rocking. All right, so I, I'll get up. Um, it looks like I'm about, what, 40 feet or so from the, the shore and where the boat is? Yeah, do you, and I assume that you have some kind of dark vision? I do, yes. So as you look over, you see a relatively large creature sort of a looks like it has sort of a furry massive type of look to it uh with an owl's head and it's dragging the rowboat into the wood so it's dragging it out of the water and up yeah it was sort of half in the water half you know up on the shoreline um when lilith sort of brought it up and now it's being drugged back all right i'm gonna cast mage armor to start with and then i will call out to it hey hey you that's that's not your boat what do you think you're doing it stops and you see these big eyes sort of open up the reflection off the moon sort of makes them shine like you know like you ever see a cat looking at you know at the nighttime when it hits it and you see these these big eyes open and then he's big hands come down and just sort of take the the rowboat and toss it sort of over to the side. I would also uh, like to cast another spell, a cantrip actually, uh, Minor Illusion. So I'm going to use Minor Illusion to create, basically to project my voice. So I'm going to project my voice and it's going to be loud and booming and it's going to originate from the opposite side of this beast. And I'm going to say, put the boat in the water. Okay. So this this bear-like creature, this massive creature, as you put this uh, this what? So what does it look? What does it look like? Is it have, or is it a sound only? You can use minor illusion just to create a sound, from what I understand, um, if you want to. So it turns to back behind where its sound is, and it lets out this incredibly loud screech. So, and over on the other side of the camp you hear something uh, respond (laughs) you see this thing sort of rise up on its back two feet and you realize this thing is monstrous like ten feet tall and it's looking the opposite direction from where you cast the illusion everyone else wakes up immediately as as these noises hit uh, the sound all around the campfire. The creature runs into the woods, the opposite direction, or the direction in which you made your sound, as if to give chase. What was that? What in the hell? Would Saul be familiar with what type of creature this might be? Uh, give me a uh, nature or survival. Man, I'm never playing Falls Run again. <laughs> Uh, nat 20 for 24. Yeah, so you, you know in the Kesper Forest of creatures that are have been seen in the area, and owlbears have been seen in the Kesper Forest, and, and you are warned, of course, to stay clear of them as they are uh, monstrous beasts that take no prisoners. And this one ran away from us toward the direction that I used Minor Illusions to make a sound, and if there was something that sounded like its buddy that responded to its cry on the other side of our camp. That is correct. Are we sure it's just not a druid illegally changing into an owlbear? <laughs> <laughs> not, not until the next edition. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds 
somebody's knickers are in a knot. So the, you hear this creature, you know, very running through the woods. And uh, you can't see it anymore. It, it goes, it disappears into the forest. And I don't see the, the one that I heard on the opposite side of the camp. No, you don't. I think it's an owlbear. It was huge, and it sounds like there might be two of them. I, I think there's one, another one over that way. And I point uh, past the campfire and past everyone who's just waking up. We should hide. I, yeah. I, wh- where can we hide? I will run up into the trees and try and hide. Another cry comes out from the one that you you uh, saw go back into the woods. <laughs> and then the sound comes back from the other beast that you heard before, much closer this time. <laughs> and you hear the crunching of, of uh, branches and, and leaves on the ground. I have run into the forest, and I will try and hide. You take the hide action? Yes. All right. What does everybody else want to do? Lilith is going to use her wings of flying, this, like, bat-looking cape that's on her, and so she can um, use an action to speak its command word, which is going to be, Yeehaw! (laughs) And then the cloak turns into bat wings on her back, like, and she has a flying speed of 60 feet. So I'm going to fly up to sort of... Up and over towards Zephyr, but sort of to see, like, aerially how, like, what we're dealing with. Do you want to go into the trees, into the branches to stay sort of hidden, or do you want to stay in the open? It is a full moon, and it is very clear. I'm gonna, you know what? That's a good idea. I can, like, perch on the top of this tree to Zephyr's left, sort of keeping an eye on between the owl bears, I guess you said, and then Zephyr. And your plan is to sort of take cover sort of behind these branches these, these wings this cloak it lasts for an hour so i'm just thinking i can fly around and potentially be helpful i don't know if i can like potentially bring people up in the tree with me can these things fly i don't know i'm just trying to get like more knowledge for this for the situation Saul, buzz i am going to sprint over to get to buzz buzz just just try to be quiet. I'm going to hide you. And I'm going to cast invisibility on Buzz. So if Buzz is willing, I will um, turn him invisible. Okay. So concentration spell. I have no idea if that also makes my swarm invisible. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Sure. If you're Anything close, you're carrying. invisible. Anything the target is wearing or carrying is invisible as long as it is on the target's position. Okay, I, I mean technically you're I'm like you don't wear the swarm, you know what I mean? The swarm wears you. <laughs> the swarm wears you. It's swarm life, man. Swarm life. I didn't choose the swarm life. The swarm life chose me. <laughs> if you had a familiar with you, would the familiar go invisible? Well, I don't think so. I would say no. So, I the the swarm of bees is still visible. Although you have become invisible. So Saul kind of like frowns and is like, oh, I, I hadn't thought of that. Do, do you want to move? Yes, I am going to continue to use the rest of my movement to move out toward the water. As far as I can go towards toward the, um, the shore, basically. Away from the campfire and the woods. Okay, so you can, you can get right to the edge of... Uh, get your feet, you're about a knee deep into the water so you are as you walk into the water it does make noise it's your are you gonna just sort of stop and stand or are you gonna continue to move i'm gonna go as far as i can into the water as much as my movement will allow me buzz uh well so i, I am invisible just me right not this one mm-hmm. okay so then anybody that gets to me um what kind of light i'm actually uh, reworking here you said it's a pretty full moon because buzz does not have any type of dark vision because he's a dragon boy yeah, it's a, it's a very bright night, um, so there are a lot of shadows cast, you know, from the trees to give places you could very easily hide in shadows. But from a, a you know looking up at the sky, it's a very clear night. Then those that can see by the swarm, basically the swarm will move uh, down from my beard to wrap like around my forearms, as if they're bracers kind of thing. And then I'll just draw my sword and ready to stand my ground. Oh, and sorry, I will actually 
spend a, a key point to summon my Asher arms, which nobody gets to see what they look like because <laughs> I'm invisible. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I do have Spare the Dying, too. Just saying. She keeps telling us she's a cleric that heals. I don't know what the deal is. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, if you die, don't worry. I got you. As you are now are invisible, sort of standing out in the water, up in the trees and hiding underneath uh, some of the brush, you see one of these giant owlbears just come crashing through your camp. The, the logs in the fire that were just at, burning down ashes are scattered everywhere. Uh, any of the items that you had laying like, your bedrolls and things are thrown about as this thing crashes through like a bull in a china shop, right? Just tearing everything apart. Uh, the other owlbear from, um, that ran away the other direction is now coming back as this first one stands in the middle of your camp and lets out this other screech, uh, calling the other owlbear back. As it comes through, it grabs the, the remains of this rowboat and tosses it into the middle of the camp, ripping it to shreds. These things get down on all fours and sort of walk around like bears for a moment, sniffing into the air, looking up into the trees. Give me uh, stealth checks. So really, they're just trying to prevent forest fire, right? Only they can prevent forest fires. <laughs> so Zephyr and Lilith... Uh, Give, and and you're are you invisible, Saul? I'm sorry. Did you say you were invisible also? I am or not. You're not. You're not. Okay. So Lilith, Zephyr, and Saul, please give me uh, stealth check. Zephyr got a six. I think Buzz's swarm uh, uh, are, is pretty loud too. Uh, once once you know the the threat kind of starts to kick in, they kind of get a little uh, little little twitchy and fidgety and and, and buzzy. I don't know if that will help <laughs> with anything. I don't know, but that's kind of what's going on with him, even though he's invisible. Uh, Lilith, what'd you get? 18. So you see him sort of get down on all their fours. They're sort of s sniffing around and looking, and one of them takes uh, quite a few steps towards Zephyr. Uh, you know, it's looking out into the trees. The other one gets into the middle of the camp, and it looks out into the water, it stops, and it, and I assume you're not moving, Saul. No, I'm just standing out uh, a little ways off of the shore in the water. From behind you, you hear the water sort of moving. And as you turn your head, two little eyeballs come up on a little head sticking out of the water and stare at you from the opposite side. <laughs> Zephyr. You see this owlbear walk up towards you. It, it's looking around. Every once in a while, its eyes sort of widen up, like to take in the light. It looks right at you. Can I cast Channel Divinity? I want to clutch my Harlequin mask, and I will uh, do Cloak of Shadows, and I will become invisible until the end of my next turn, or until I attack a cast a, cast a spell. So you become invisible. This Albert takes a couple steps towards you. Almost, you can feel its breathing as you're standing there. I got my hand over my mouth, trying to control my breathing, try, so I don't make any noise. The uh, the sort of the fur on the back of its of its body sort of stands up as it looks around, and and its, its head is just within feet of you. Then it turns and starts walking back towards the camp. Saul, the other owlbear walks up to the middle of the camp, so both are staring at you and eyes are behind you. Saul is going to take a deep breath in through his nose and exhale through his mouth. He's going to reach deep down inside of himself and unleash his radiant soul. His eyes, that little shimmer that you saw earlier when he healed Lilith, his eyes are now just going to ignite. It's going to make him very easy to see for these owlbear, I'm sure. He's also going to sprout these shimmering wings from the back of his shoulders. These wings allow him to fly. He's going to, he has uh, 30 feet of fly speed, so he's going to take off from the water, leaving this owlbear, or both of these owlbears, and whatever this creature is in the water below him, and he's going to go up 30 feet into the air to be looking down at them 
assuming that these owlbear cannot fly from what he knows of them. So the as soon as you take off and the water moves, you you shoot up into the air 30 feet. The closest owlbear comes galloping at you uh, in, in full stride, jumping up into the air to try to grab onto your feet, missing and falling flash into the water with this gigantic splash. You know, it's a, a cannonball that just water rolls out from each side. And the turtle jumps onto the owlbear, latching into it. Yes. As they battle between the other owlbear, runs out into the water along, and they grab onto this turtle, and they're they're trying to bite into it as it's biting in. Soon, the turtle dies, flips over, and floats up. The owlbears then sort of beat on it and claw at it, ripping the meat out as it's as it's sort of tearing this, this turtle to pieces. What would you all like to do while this is happening? I would like to swoop down as this is happening and try to grab Zephyr or be like, hold on to me. Let's get out of here. You can't, well, Zephyr, you said till your next till turn, next you're turn. in combat. So we're going to say that's just six seconds then, so you're invisible again. Well, butter my biscuit, they're distracted. Let's go. Yes, we must get out of here. And I'll start running. I will I will fly, because I have 60 foot fly speed, and be like, Zephyr, grab on. I will grab on. And I don't know. I don't know if I can't fly as high or as fast or whatever, but I'm going to try to fly with her. She's an air genasi. She can't weigh too much. <laughs> <laughs> she does seem to be full of a lot of hot air. <laughs> oh! <laughs> so, Buzz, is, are you going to follow, or does your will your bees sense where you are, even invisible? Yes, uh, yeah, because they're still like crawling on me. And if if Zephyr's taken off, then I'll I'll follow Zephyr for the queen. Okay, Saul. He didn't get any magical feelings with Lilith, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. He barely had a chance to meet. <laughs> in the light of day. Saul sees these two owlbears here, and uh, how smart are owlbears, uh, would Saul think? You know they're not very intelligent. So he, he thinks that they're probably going to pre- be preoccupied. He, he was considering casting another spell at them, but he's going to uh, use his ability to fly to try and follow the rest of the party as best he can. Would Buzz know if one of the owl bears knows how many licks it takes to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop. Mm, Maybe I should cast question. Speak with Animals again and ask. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. If, if you would like to, yeah, you will become you will become visible. Uh, if that's you true. Speak with that's animals. true. Mm, Worth it? Perhaps a question, a, a, a question for another another night. <laughs> It's an age-old question, and how often do you run into an owlbear, really? <laughs> well, apparently, in the cast before us, really often. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So I guess you got that option for later. I mean, they answer it in the in the commercial. It's one, three. two. Yeah, but you're not you're not in in our in the in our land. You, it could be different in, in, in this world. <laughs> yeah, don't meta game, Emily. <laughs> yeah, Emily. <laughs> okay, so you all can easily leave your camp area and and move along up the road how long do you want to travel into the dark forest um, it is probably uh, two o'clock in the morning kind of thing you can you can travel the rest of the night if you want you can find shelter somewhere along the road y'all what do you want to do I'll keep going Lilith put me down buzz can you see oh yeah sorry I can see a bit the moon do you think we're far enough away now? I mean, if, we, if we're far away, so we can't hear the chomping on this turtle anymore. I mean, <laughs> that's good enough for Buzz. Yeah, after you you get a little ways away, right? You 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 don't hear this these beast. Well, I'll be. I barely got a wrist. This is so stupid. Oh, my leg is killing me. Let's let's stop here and set up watch again and try and and hide ourselves some. Yeah, I didn't mean to scare you with my wings there, honey. Sorry. Oh no, that was exhilarating. Maybe the fire was a bad idea. I don't know. It, that that could have attracted them. I mean, I could put a magical fire up. I think it's probably best we don't have any fire. Okay, no fire? All right. Okay, so you're 
sort of staying along the road edge. Is that what you plan to do? And Back a little bit from the road, yeah. S- still in the trees, so we're kind of hidden. All right, so the rest of the night goes uneventful. You all get the benefits of a long rest. Whew. And you wake in the morning. I assume there's no here as breakfast for anybody, so... <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, you take off and head more towards North Lord. Yep. So as you travel along the Western Merchant's Way... You, you do occasionally, you know, see someone traveling the other direction. They give you the, you know, the, the nice polite nod, but they don't stop to talk. I'll say hello to everybody and I'll wave to them. They sort of bow their head and and, and, and move along. Um, most of them look like merchants, farmers, or traders. Nothing um, out of the ordinary. You've traveled this road before. It is a main road. And eventually you make it to Northwald which is your destination. Uh, it's a small village, and you come up on the, the tavern. Everyone in the bar is wearing name tags. So as you... There's two farmer jets. <laughs> it's a close family. As you travel up the, the road, uh, Zephyr, you see two of the wagons that are definitely wagons from your family's caravan. Um, they have the markings on the side, they do look like they've been uh, sort of beaten up a little bit and not taken care of, as your family would have. Uh, but they are sitting outside of this tavern. I will run up to the wagons and look at them. And are they covered? Yeah, they're they're you know as your traveling family, they're covered wagons that you could sleep in and and you know, you know put items in that kind of thing. I'll look all around them, see if I recognize any of the stuff. Um, you see a lot of things in the back. You don't see anybody else around on the outside of the tavern, but you do see it looks like um, bags, and it doesn't look like it looks like it's been, there's new owners, right? The things that you see inside there look like they're from um, you know bags and and uh, boxes and crates all piled inside there. It's it's all a mismatch of stuff. It's it's not the nice you know bedded wagons that you're used to. These are not they're not what I thought they were. Not anymore. Uh, the horses are out tied up next to the trough on the outside of the, the tavern. Well, we've come all this way. Shall we go into the tavern? Well, dang, I could use a drink. I do like to try out the local beer at, at any town or village I come across. This This is exciting. Are you into beer, boy? I sure am. Beer helps still my mind. That is not what it does to me. <laughs> well, perhaps you need to add some spice to your beer. The heck does that mean? You I mean the spice? I tried it. It was interesting. Is that some weird thing? Like, I don't know you. That seems weird. It, it's, it's paprika. Haven't you ever had paprika? Paprika? Paprika. No, I don't think so. Well, it, wait till we get inside. I'll show you. Is it in gravy or biscuits? Uh, I suppose you could. I, I, I don't know how well it would go with gravy or biscuits. Ooh, I would like a spicy biscuit. Mmm. That does sound good. And Dang. I'll walk in the door. Okay, you open up the door. It is uh, a, a relatively large tavern for a small town like this. And as you walk in, uh, the, the door sort of creaks open. People s- look up at you. In the back of the, the tavern, it looks like sort of a gang of ruffians, right? Uh, there's eight, nine of these guys. They're, they're sort of playing cards and, and, you know, causing sort of a havoc as the waitress comes over to, to hand their beer. They sort of, you know, give her a slap, and, and they're, they're, they're obviously troublemakers. Uh, spilling their beer, you know, sort of eating into their food and spitting things on the floor. Um, at the front tables, you see a, a couple, looks like local farmers, that are minding their own business. Sort of looks like they're talking between each other after a, you know, a, a day's work, and they're just trying to get themselves a beer. And over in the corner at the round table right near the door, uh, you see an old man in a, in a robe sitting back. And he has a, a glass of what looks to be wine and he's just looks like he's sort of surveying the situation as you walk in the bartender behind the bar looks over at you and says please welcome come in take a seat uh sit here at the bar what can i get you 
He'll have a beer. Yes, a beer would be delightful. Plenty of ales. Which type would you like? Oh, goodness. I, I'll try one of each. Keep them coming. Wonderful. And, and uh, the rest? You got, you got any beer for this leg? And I, like, stick my leg up on the bar and show him my, like, turtle scar. What, what can fix this ailment here, bud? Uh, well, it, uh, I can give you some of our finest ale will seem to help. It may take some time, but, uh... But I'll be happy. It is a little expensive, but that will fix your leg. Um, how expensive are we talking? Maybe a, a gold piece per beer on this fine ale. Oh, dang. Okay, I'll take one just to try it, but holy. The waitress comes up to the other side of the bar and sort of gives the bartender, Harv, a look like, you know, come on, Harv, what, what are you doing here? And uh, <laughs> he sort he sort of gives her a wink and puts the beer down, takes takes the coin, and you know brings over six different ales and lays them over in, in front of Saul, and he says, "I ah oh, yeah, these are the these are the best. You you're not going to find anything better." And he looks over at Buzz and and uh, Zephyr. I randomly point to one in front of Saul and I say, "Give me that one." Can I, like, roll a dice to, to a die to see if I like it, if I think it's good? Sure, we can do that. Uh, Buzz, did you want anything? Sugar water. And, uh, so these these <laughs> bees, what are they doing right now? Uh, currently they are a beard. Okay. So, he's very uncomfortable looking at you, but he, uh... He says, uh, water? Well, we, we do have some water. He wants sugar in his water. Yes. Okay, so he sort of walks over. He he has a pitcher on the counter, and he pours it into a, a stein. And uh, you see him sort of shuffling around through the drawers and stuff. And he has some white powdery substance that he pulls out and sort of sprinkles it into the glass and shakes it up a little bit, looks around, and here you go. All right, I'll drink it. <laughs> it doesn't taste sweet. But it, it does taste like sort of a, not a unpleasant water, but not the best water you've ever had. What is this tavern called? This this tavern is called the Second Troll Inn. Zephyr, as you're looking around the bar, you the stories you heard back when you were in uh, at the at the temple about these ruffians that came and, and essentially killed your family, some of them were described. And as you look over... Kip and Jordy are the two that are uh, names that you had heard. The descriptions match the two that are sitting over at the table in the back of of the uh, tavern. I will um, walk so I'm between the other three in my group and Kip and Jordy, and I will kind of look back at my group and and mostly whisper, "See those two guys behind me." Yes? Yeah, well, what about them? I see them. They're very, very bad men. What? What's going on? They killed my family. Who? Shh. What? Keep your voice down. Sorry, it's this ale. Dang. Two men behind me. I'm going to try and get them outside. You are without a swarm? Would you help me teach them a lesson? You want me to pee? No. What kind of lesson are we teaching them? Preferably, want to teach them to not hurt people's families ever again. Oh, so we talk serious. We must protect the swarm! I'm going to march right over to him. Har okay, so before you, you go over, Har uh, bartender Harvey says, here over here is you talking as he as he's bringing some drinks over to the waitress. And he says, I, I wouldn't mess with them. Leave them be. If you want to start some kind of trouble, take it outside. That was the plan. Buzz, please. And right at that point in time, Jeff jumps up from the table and punches Chad right in the face. You son of a... You can't... That's not fair! And Chad gets up and sort of flips the chair back and smashes it against the wall and jumps on top of Jeff, pushing him over into the table with Kip and Jordy. 
This has been a Sounds of Steel production.